Right, so let's have a look at how, if we want to make use of raw PCM data, uh, what's available to us in the platform. We're going to start with the audio in class, which allows us to record raw, as it states there, uncompressed PCM data from the microphone or the microphone connected to the wave device. Um, using this technique, we can make use of double buffering, and we have like a nice illustration uh, showing how we can do that. The Audio In class has its own, as you would expect, interface class, and this is the I Audio In event listener, and most notably is uh, this particular method, which is the on audio in buffer is filled method. This will be called in your application during the uh, recording process when the buffer that you have supplied has been filled with PCM data. So we have a, an example here of how we can do this. Create an audio in instance, construct with the listener, and also there's almost like a, uh, an additional construction process whereby we call the prepare method, where we specify the uh, device from which we're going to be recording, in this case the mic, we specify the, uh, the size of the samples that we're going to be making, and here it's um, unsigned 8-bit PCM. We state that we want to record two channels of audio, and we can also specify the, the sample rate. What we now need to do, we need to specify the buffer to which the data will be recorded. So this is a, a byte buffer which we have already created, and we pass this to the audio in instance by calling the add buffer method. The audio, the audio in instance is now ready to start recording. So we can now call the start method. So recording is in progress. At some point in our application, we'll receive this buffer is filled event. The buffer to which we're currently recording is now filled. What we can do, we can take the data which we've read from the buffer and do with it as, as we see fit. We can then clear the contents of that byte buffer and we can then essentially re re reuse it by passing it back into the add buffer to the audio in instance. So this allows it to continue recording into the buffer which we initially supplied once we've cleared its contents. Okay, so how about playing PCM data? Again, for this, we have the audio out class. Again, allows the playing of raw and compressed PCM data, and we can also use a double buffering technique with this also. The associated interface class for this is the iAudio out event listener, and the, the most notable method here is the buffer end reached. So what we do in this case, we supply a buffer containing the necessary information to be played. When the audio art device has reached the end of that supplied buffer, this will be the method that will be called in your application to indicate this to you. So here we have an example of how we do this. We create an audio out instance, construct with the event listener, and we also do this additional preparation. So here we are playing back PCM signed 16 bits, mono single channels, and we also specify the sample rate. This is where we create the byte buffer which will contain the information which is going to be played. So we specify how big this byte buffer will be. And then obviously data is written into that byte buffer. But then we then feed that to the audio out instance by calling the write buffer uh, method. Then we can call start. So playback has begun. When the playback has reached the end of the source buffer which we've provided, our buffer end reached will be called. We can then feed a new buffer for the audio, audio uh, output device to continue playing from. And we'll see how we can use, uh, make use of double buffering to reduce the latency in switching from one buffer to another buffer. So during playback, we can call stop or reset, and your application will be informed with the necessary event. So let's have a look at double buffering visually. 
If you imagine that we've initialized an audio input device, our recording application can supply two buffers to which the audio input device can record data into. We can instruct the audio input device to start recording, for example, to buffer one. And at some point in time, buffer one will be filled. Buffer one will send an event to our application informing us of this, and we can then instruct the audio input device to start recording to buffer two. While recording to buffer two, our application can manage, make use, take uh, the data contained in buffer one, and uh, recording to buffer two will continue. And then at some point in time, again, buffer two will be filled, we can send an event to our application and then instruct the audio input device to start recording to buffer one. So I think you get the, the picture. It's quite a, a common technique. Again, we can use this technique in the, uh, the audio out. We can first of all supply two completed buffers of data to the audio input device. We then instruct the audio output, audio output device to start reading from buffer one. When it's completed the reading of buffer one, our application will be informed with the buffer end uh, event. We can then instruct the audio output device to start reading from buffer two. While it's reading from buffer two, we can replenish, replace, update the contents of buffer one such that when the switch occurs, there's no latency, no, lo no log, no, um, no lag in, um, in the playback, so it's seamless. So again here, buffer two, uh, the audio output device has finished reading buffer two, and we, we can instruct the audio output device to switch back to buffer one. Okay, so let's talk about mixing now, and why we would want to, to do this. Mixing allows us to play simultaneously a number of different sounds. Um, limited a number of, there are a limited number of player instances uh, allowed in the platform, and this allows a, a mechanism by which we can you know, make use of limited resources, and also uh, it consumes less uh, computing power. So what we're going to do, we're going to see how we can um, simply perform this using a simple example. So imagine um, we're going to perform some mixing on a, a .wav file. So this is the format of a .wav file, if you're familiar with this. The important bit is that we want to get to the data, and I'm going to show you a mechanism by which we can open a file of this type and parse the necessary headers to actually get to the data information. Imagine if we have a file handle and we construct that file handle to specify the path to which we want to open and the fact that we're going to open this file for reading. We can read the various headers, the RIF and the .wav format, and we can use the internal file pointer to skip over the various sections after having read a particular piece from the file. At this point in time, we're going to read a chunk header, which is this information here. If we read from the file this size and then we store it into here, we can determine the size of the PCM data contained in the file by then constructing a byte buffer by this given size, this size here. Once the data is contained within the byte buffer, we can, we can rewind the internal pointer of the byte buffer to be at the beginning of the byte buffer. 